What's going on, everybody? It's Mr. Gustin back in the physics classroom. Now we're doing our complete projectile problem, our second challenge lab. We called it a cannon problem. It's a complete projectile problem. And here's basically the challenge. The challenge is I have got a launcher set up. That launcher's at 20 degrees. It's the same launcher. I took it off of its base. Now I can move its angle. This is the same launcher we did with our horizontal challenge lab. So now I have this, and I'm going to launch it at an angle of 20 degrees. You have two goals. The first goal is to figure out where to place a cup or a hoop on the floor at the same height it's launched from so that when it is launched, it travels from its starting height and lands in that cup. So where does that cup need to go for us to drop it right in there when I launch it at 20 degrees? That's goal number one. Goal number two is where would I have to place a vertical hoop so that this marble, when launched at 20 degrees, leaves the ground, travels through this hoop at the apex, and then into goal number one. These are our two challenges. This is what I presented you with. One of the major ideas here that we have to consider is that because I already know the initial velocity of this launcher, I know the initial velocity of the launcher, even when it's pointed at 20 degrees. And for some reason, this is hard for students to conceptualize. So let's go ahead and start making some notes here. I know my angle is 20 degrees. I also know from the previous uh, horizontal challenge lab that this launcher fires objects at 4.27 meters per second. I know this. I calcul calculated this. I can carry that information over here with me. All right? The first thing I want to do is let's do goal one. So goal one is essentially figuring out this range right here. What is this change in x over the entire uh, path? What I, uh, some things I want to make sure I know is that this marble starts at the ground and goal one is also placed at the ground. So the total change in height is zero. It goes up and it comes back down exactly where it started. Let's go ahead and organize our variables. Over here, here's what I got. I got my x variables, I got my y variables, I've got my displacement, right? My delta x slash delta y. I've got my velocity initial, my velocity final. I've got my acceleration, my time. These are all great variables in both directions. So uh, the x displacement, this is like what I'm solving for. This is my big answer for goal one. This is what I'm looking for. So I'll come back to that. In the y direction, because that object goes up and comes back down to the same height, I actually see no change in y displacement. The y the position doesn't change. It goes up and comes down and travels horizontally, but the net change, the overall change in height is zero. The initial velocity in the x and y directions. Now this is interesting. Last time with our horizontal launch lab, we saw that there was no velocity in the y direction to begin with, only in the x direction. Well, in this case, because we're launching it at an angle of 20 degrees, we see that there are actually two components. There's a velocity vector in the x direction, and there's a velocity vector in my y direction. You can call that initial velocity in the y direction. So there are velocities in both directions, and we have to consider them. So if I think about my angle being 20 degrees, and that's the angle right here, here's theta. If this is 20 degrees, and I want to find my initial velocity in the y direction. I'm going to kind of sidebar it over here. But here's my triangle. There's the initial speed. This is v initial y. This is v initial x. There's theta. What I find is that the velocity in the x direction is actually equal to the initial speed cosine of theta. And I find that the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial speed times sine of theta. And that's because x is my adjacent side, my adjacent vector, and the y velocity is my opposite vector. So these are my initial speeds in both directions, the x and y direction. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of move that over into my table, not necessarily calculate those yet, but move them over with their equations. So initial velocity in the x direction Vx is going to be equal to the initial speed times cosine of that 20 degrees. And so if I go ahead and do that, and I say that this is all initial is my 
4.27 cosine of 20, I end up with the initial velocity in the x direction being equal to 4.01, 4.01 meters per second. And if I do the same thing over here initially, the initial in the y direction is equal to initial speed times sine of 20, I find that the initial velocity in the y direction is actually equal to 1.46 meters per second. So I now have my initial velocity in the x and y direction. I know that there really is no final velocity in the x direction because my acceleration in the x direction is zero. There is no force speeding up or slowing down this object in the x direction, so that's zero. Uh, in the y direction, my acceleration is baby g, or negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I secretly know the final velocity of in the y direction because, again, my change in height is zero. It goes up and comes back down. And we've talked about the symmetry in these types of problems. If it lands at the same height it starts at, the information over here in the y direction matches the information over here in the y direction. The only difference is that the object is traveling upward in the positive direction to begin with. And at the end, it's traveling downward, and in our case, in the negative direction. So what is the final velocity at the end of this motion in the y direction? Well, shoot, the velocity is negative 1.46 meters per second. It's the same magnitude it was launched with. It's just the opposite direction, so I call it negative 1.46. Here's all the information that I have. Uh, I'm trying to find my, my range. And we know that the range equation is you know, velocity in the x times time equals range. We've done this before. I don't know time. I don't know displacement or range. I need to find that. And if i got to find time, I want to use the other direction because these two motions are simultaneous. So let's do that. Let's think about this. I want to find time using the y direction. I can pick any equation that I want that does include time. So let's think about this. I can either use uh, my quadratic equation, but there's an initial velocity that's not zero. That sounds like I may end up having to use a quadratic. I'm not super excited about that uh, prospect. The other could be my velocity equation. And velocity, I'm going to try my velocity equation. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and say the final velocity in the y direction is equal to the initial velocity in the y direction plus a times t. It's an equation that's got velocity, which I know, acceleration, which I also know, and it's got time, which I don't know, but I'm looking for. So I'm going to use this equation to find time. I go ahead and do this. The final velocity is negative 1.46 meters per second. The initial velocity is positive 1.46 meters per second. Acceleration is downward at 9.8 meters per second squared, and I'm trying to find time. And when I go ahead and plug all this in and I calculate time, what I end up finding is that time, total time in the air from the ground all the way to the ground ends up being 0 0.87 seconds. This is my time. It's not my answer, but it is the time this object is in the air for. I can take that time like I did last time, plug it into my constant velocity equation when I find that the range or delta x is equal to the speed of the object in the x direction, 4.01 meters per second times 0 0.87 seconds. The range of this marble ends up being 1.745. That can't be right. I copied that down wrong, didn't I? Obviously, that's not right. There's a, a lesson there for you, folks. Analyze your answer. I know this answer has got to be about 90% of 4. 1.75 is not 90% of 4. It is, however, 3.49 meters. There's my answer. Where is goal 1 located? Goal 1 is located 3.49 meters from where I launch. I now have this figured out. That's goal one. Goal one is where should that go? It should go there. I crank the 20, it'll go. Goal two asks, basically, where's the apex? 
what is the height at the apex over here so that I can put my ring there and launch it. So we're going to actually move over here and look at goal number two. So come on. Let's rework this problem. So I'm going to have some new x variables and some new y variables because I'm solving for the apex. I'm solving for goal number two. So let's talk about our delta x and delta y's, our velocity initial, our velocity final, our acceleration, and our times. All right. Um, well, at the apex, at the apex, my delta x is going to be equal to one half the total because that's half of the trip. And my apex over here, delta y, that's what I'm solving for. So this is goal number two. Where is that thing located? All right. What's the initial velocity in the x direction? Well, the velocity in the x direction isn't changing because there's no acceleration. So it is still 4.01. Uh, the acceleration in the x direction, still no forces. That's still 0 meters per second squared. And how long does it take to get to the apex? Well, the apex is exactly half of my trip. I go up and I come back down. So the apex time is equal to 1 half the total time. So if I go ahead and look and I remind myself what was the total time, let's go over here. Total time was 0 0.8 seven seconds. So what is my time to the apex? It's just half of that. We grab our calculator real quick. Zero point eight seven divided by two. Our time to the apex is equal to zero point four three five seconds. And that's the same over here in the y direction because these two motions are simultaneous. The acceleration in the y direction, still baby G, still downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. Final velocity in the y direction, is it different than before? Am I calling a new place final than I did before? Yeah, I am. I changed this. I'm, I'm analyzing to the apex. So I'm looking at things to the apex. That's why the time is cut in half, because I'm not looking from beginning to end. I'm looking from beginning to apex. And what's going on at the apex is that the velocity in the y direction at the apex is equal to 0 meters per second. It's changing directions. It goes up to the apex, stops, changes directions, and then falls back down. There's some unique physics happening there. The speed isn't 0. It's still moving in the x direction, but the vertical velocity is 0. It changes directions vertically. What's my initial y velocity? Well, my initial y velocity is what it was before. It's exactly what I launched it with in the first place. And I launched it with an initial velocity of 1.46 meters per second. This is all the information I have. What am I trying to find? I'm trying to find change in y. Well, can I do that without having to find time in the x direction? Yeah, this time I can because I already know time because of the unique aspects of the apex. So if I'm trying to find change in y, I want to find change in y, and I, you know, it's got an initial velocity, which makes me nervous about the quadratic because I'm not a fan of the quadratic formula, so I might steer clear of there. But I know initial velocity. I know final velocity. I know acceleration. I'm looking for, uh, for displacement. I'm going to go ahead and use the squares equation where the initial velocity squared plus 2a change in y. Let's start plugging some things in. Final velocity is 0. Oh, that term goes away. I love it when terms go away. 0 uh, is equal to my 1.46 meters per second squared, that whole quantity squared, plus 2 times the acceleration, which is downward at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, times what I'm solving for is my change in Y. Here is my equation. Please do not forget to square your initial velocity. Please do not forget that this is upward and positive and that the acceleration is downward and negative. If you forget that, this whole thing will get a little screwy. I'm going to go ahead and solve this in my calculator. And when I do, I find that the change in Y at the apex is equal to 0 0.11 meters or for us in class, we call that 11 centimeters above where we launched from. This is where this hoop would be located vertically. 
If I want to think about where is it located horizontally, it is at half of the complete range, which is 3.49 over 2. That means my delta x for gold 2 is 1.745 meters. I now have the coordinates necessary to set up goal two. How high should this be? This should be 11 centimeters. Where should I be located? Where should I place this here? This should be located at a distance of 1.745 meters from the initial launch height, right in the middle of the uh, total range. This was our cannon challenge. We took the same projectile. I gave you an angle of 20 degrees and asked you to locate two unique parts of this motion. The first location was at the very end. What is the total range of this motion? The second unique part was the apex. Where is the apex located horizontally? Right in the middle. And where is it located vertically? And could we solve for that? These were our two challenges. If you have questions, ask me. But there's a new challenge coming up. Now I'm going to move this goal. I'm going to take this goal and drop it lower than it was before. And if you're ready for that challenge, go to the next video. If you're not, go rewatch this one. Think through. If you have questions, as always, ask me. And until then, see ya.